How can I be? Like my brother Nephi and Father Lehi of old, how can I be? In chapter 1 of 2 Nephi, Lehi wanted to teach and prophesy to his children before he died. He told Laman and Lemuel that because of God's mercy, they didn't drown in the ocean when they rebelled against Nephi and were saved when they left Jerusalem that he saw was destroyed in a vision. He said that despite their afflictions, by covenant they obtained a land choice above all others for their inheritance. It was for all who'd be led out of other countries by the Lord's hand, was kept from the knowledge of other nations, and none would come to it unless brought by his hand. Lehi said that if they kept the commandments, they'd be blessed and prosper and never be brought into captivity. But if they dwindled or stopped believing in the creation, the Lord's great and marvelous works, the power to do all things by faith or his commandments and infinite goodness, then his judgments would come upon them and other nations would be given power to take away their lands and they'd be scattered and smitten. Lehi warned Laman and Lamuel to repent and awake from the deep sleep of hell and shake off the awful chains that bound them. He said that through repentance he'd been redeemed by the Lord and encircled about eternally in the arms of his love. He hoped they'd be the Lord's choice and favored people, but if they didn't repent, they'd be cut off from him, led by the devil, cursed for generations, be hated and visited by sword and famine. Lehi told his sons to arise from the dust and be men, and taught them that true manhood is to be determined, be in one mind and one heart, put on the armor of righteousness, shake off the chains binding them, rebel no more, and be an instrument in God's hands. He said they'd been saved in the wilderness by Nephi's righteousness and not to rebel against him any more. He told Ishmael's sons to hearken to Nephi's voice and not perish, and he'd leave them with his blessing, and then thank Zoram for being Nephi's true friend and said his posterity would be blessed and prosper if they were righteous. Chapter 2 tells of the creation, fall, and atonement that are Heavenly Father's plan of redemption. Lehi told his son Jacob, Redemption comes through the Holy Messiah, who offered himself as a sacrifice for sin that answered the ends of the law, referring to consequences of the fall and the affixed punishment for disobeying God's commandments. Lehi said we're taught good from evil, have been given the law, and are justified or allowed to come back to God. When we disobey the commandments, we become guilty and unclean, cut off from God, and can't be justified by the law. But we can be justified, pardoned from sin's punishment, declared righteous and made worthy to enter God's presence because of Jesus Christ's atonement when we repent and come to him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Lehi needed to make sure his family knew that no one can live with God except through the merits, mercy, and grace of the Savior who laid down his life in the flesh and took it again by the power of the Spirit that brought to pass the resurrection of the dead. In 2.11, Lehi taught that opposition is necessary in Heavenly Father's plan and we're free to choose liberty and eternal life or captivity and death. He told his sons that these things were for their learning and profit, and there is a God who created all things in heaven and on earth to be acted or acted upon. If Adam and Eve had not partaken of the forbidden fruit, they would not have fallen, but remained in the same state they were created. The fall was part of God's plan that made opposition possible, and we should celebrate and honor our mother Eve's wisdom and courage for allowing the fall so that men might be. After they partook of the fruit, they became mortal and would die, had children, worked for their food, could do both good and sin, and learn that this life is the time to repent. Lehi said that good and right choices lead to happiness and peace, and choices of sin and evil lead to unhappiness, sorrow, and misery. God gave us agency and taught us to know good from evil so we could act for ourselves and be free to choose, but not free to choose the consequences of our actions. Lehi taught us four conditions that make agency or freedom of choice possible. Knowledge of what is good and evil, or to obey or break a law. Laws, to know what he wanted us to choose. Opportunity, to choose with opposing and inviting choices. And the power to choose. In chapter 3, Lehi taught his youngest son Joseph about four men, all with the same name. 
verses 4 and 5, he taught about a prophecy made by Jacob and Rachel's son, also named Joseph, who was carried captive into Egypt. The Lord promised a righteous branch of his family would be broken off, but then remembered in the Lord's covenants and brought out of darkness and captivity into light and freedom. Verses 6 through 15, Lehi taught about a prophet who shared Joseph of Egypt's name that God would raise up as a choice seer to bless his descendants. A seer sees things not visible to the natural eye from the beginning to the end and gives us answers before the problems and sometimes even before we know the questions. This choice seer will do the Father's work, be great like Moses, bring God's word to Joseph's descendants, and convince them of Bible truths written by Judah's descendants. Be strong, confound those that tried to destroy him, be a spokesman to declare the writings of Joseph's descendants, and rise up mightily among them. When Joseph Smith translated verse 15, he saw this choice seer and his father were both named Joseph. Imagine how he felt when he realized this prophecy was talking about himself. Before Lehi died, he counseled and blessed his children and grandchildren. He told Laman and Lemuel's children, I know if ye are brought up in the way ye should go, ye will not depart from it. Laman and Lemuel were certainly brought up in the way they should go, but departed from it, and the Lord assured Lehi that their children's sins would be visited on their parents' heads. He blessed Ishmael's family, and we see Sam as an example of a good, strong church member who does his duty and follows his leaders. After these final lessons, Lehi died, and not many days later, Laman, Lemuel, and Ishmael's sons were angry with Nephi because of his admonitions of the Lord. He had always obeyed the Lord and told his brothers the truth, no matter how angry this made them, and he knew where this would eventually lead. In chapters 4 and 5, Nephi told us we can overcome feeling discouraged by reading the scriptures, delighting in and pondering things of the Lord, trusting and looking to him for support, and praying to him mightily. In verse 17, Nephi wrote of his difficulties and feelings in a passage called the Psalm of Nephi. A psalm is a poem or hymn. His books filled with stories of his greatness allow us to see how much he was like us and needed the Lord's help. And these verses show us how we can learn to follow him and overcome sorrow and temptation. In the first part of his psalm, Nephi wrote that he was a wretched man whose soul grieveth because of his iniquities. Nephi wrote of his feelings and why he gave in the temptations because of his anger, probably with his brothers who were angry with him and would soon try to kill him again. They beat him, tied him up, left him to die, tried to get others to kill him in Lehi, mocked him when building the ship, tried to throw him into the ocean, and tied him up for four days. It looks like he had a right to feel angry at them. But he knew this only gave place for Satan to enter his heart, destroying his peace, and wondered why he gave in to anger, sorrow, and sin when he'd been given so much. He learned that Satan can accomplish as much through discouragement, depression, and despair as he can by temptation. If Nephi had hardened his heart and not regained the companionship of the Holy Ghost, the Nephite civilization may have ended before it even started. Nephi ended his psalm with a prayer, asking Heavenly Father to deliver him out of his enemy's hands, and promised to trust God and praise him forever. Laman and Lemuel were angry again with Nephi, and he prayed and was told to take Zoram, Sam, and their families, his younger brothers Jacob and Joseph, his sisters, and anyone else who wanted to go with them. They traveled into the wilderness for many days to escape both the physical danger and negative spiritual influence Laman and Lemuel would have on them. The Lord was with them, and they planted seeds that grew well and raised many different kinds of animals. He brought the brass plates and Leahona, and they were happy because they kept the Lord's commandments. They learned to build buildings and make things out of wood, iron, copper, brass, steel, gold, and silver. They worked very hard and built a beautiful temple. They called themselves the people of Nephi and named the place after him. Laman and Lemuel's hearts grew hard like a flint, and the Lord seemed to have no way to soften them anymore. The Lamanites were cursed and cut off from the Lord's presence because they hardened their hearts against him and were marked with a dark skin so the Nephites would stay away from them. They became lazy, full of mischief, and hunted animals in the wilderness. And without scriptures, priesthood, revelations, a temple, or the Spirit to guide them, how could they have been happy? Well, in 2 Nephi 5.27, Nephi and his people lived after the manner of happiness. That comes to all who make the right choices and keep the Lord's commandments. 
And these are chapters 1 through 5 of 2 Nephi in the Book of Mormon, Another Testament of Jesus Christ. I hope you had fun learning more about 2 Nephi. If you enjoy watching these videos, please subscribe below and you can click the thumbs up button. Also, please share these with anyone you think might enjoy them, and I'll keep making new ones. Thanks again for watching, and find some time this week to ponder. Like my brother Nephi, and fatherly high of old, how can I?